dare to look into a world where you are vulnerable. Smile while the clueless glass shows what it sees, never knowing the beauty that lies beneath. Behold, the power of creating. Watch as we transform this ball of dirt, also known as clay, into something aesthetically pleasing, even functional. I got into clay in my late teens. There was something about clay that was so captivating. This process of working with the earth, forming it and shaping it in my hands. It was magical. Within all people lie this power of creating. Yet, we don't always think of ourselves as creators. It's this perspective in which we see ourselves. And perhaps that needs to change. There are so many different types of art and creating. It doesn't have to be this traditional form of clay, drawing and painting, etc. It could be engineering, robotics, singing, um, so many different ways, making a garden, making a lovely meal, creating a beautiful home. We are, live in a world full of creative beings. Just think about the space that we're occupying right now. Think of all the thousands and thousands of people that have created things to make the space that we're in. From the people who created the nuts and bolts that hold your seat together, to the lights, to the wiring, to the art on the wall. People and hum humans are creative. I draw my inspiration from nature. The lines, the colors, the shapes, the textures, the forms. Something so captivating about the natural world for us artists. And when we look at the natural world, it's no wonder that we desire to be creative. What does art do? Art teaches us that there's more than one solution. Rather than one fixed outcome, we see that there's multiple ways to solve one problem. But if we were to dig beneath the surface of why we don't create, we might find fear. Fear of failure, fear of external pressures, social pressures, et cetera, the reasons why we just kind of stop creating. And also, I've kind of noticed as an art teacher that as we, once when we were children, we were really creative, imaginatory, exploratory, but somewhere along the line as we mature, we create less. I guess those external pressures just start influencing us, um, and so we don't create as much. But art is really about the process, not as much about the product. So if we were to think about that, um, we might not be so fearful of just getting into the process. And I think there's something so magical about creating. It's just this willingness to try something new and also just an idea of your mind and then making something come to life from that. I find so much satisfaction working with clay specifically, just forming something in my hands. It's so magical to create. And it's also really amazing to think about that um, all civilizations throughout time and history have used clay to create aesthetic forms and functional forms. So that fact alone reminds me that we are creative beings. The artists here are working from the same wedge of clay. However, their um, style and form are going to be different. So I grew up in a family of pilots, and that meant that we were always on time, highly organized, very practical, and there was a checklist for everything. There was no such thing as an emergency, and we always knew exactly what we needed to do. We even prepared before going to events, like we would say AIS, which means butt in seat, <laughs> is at this time. And we would go, to, and that was just how we lived. And so I grew up pretty predictable, pretty organized, and my husband would attest, uh, very keen to looking for perfect, right? I was always trying to be perfect, the same way a pilot out the gate is perfect. And then I had kids. 
And Henry and Owen are amazing. But what they taught me was that the world that I was in control of wasn't going to be perfect anymore. They had so many messes in my house. A house that looked like I could show it on a real estate website any day turned into chaos. There were diapers, there were bottles, and there were sleepless nights. And I felt totally off balance and out of my head. And I didn't know what I needed, but I knew I needed to do something to figure out why I was so overwhelmed. And I started thinking that all of my life I avoided art, I avoided mess. And I needed to find a way to use my hands differently. I love my children, and what I loved was that they showed me how to embrace chaos. So I Googled, what hobbies do people have? <laughs> and there's a lot, like a lot of really interesting, quirky, weird, bizarre, niche hobbies out there. But the one that I wanted to learn was pottery and clay making. And I told my husband, and on Christmas morning, I got a gift certificate to a pottery class, and I thought, no, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I walked in, I reached for the doorknob, and I thought, I really don't need to be here. There's nothing that I need from this place. I'm organized. I have everything ready. I don't need this. But actually, I did. And I learned that the very first thing at the pottery wheel is called centering. You take this ball of clay, it's all shapeless and ugly. You smack it onto the bat. You have to take a deep breath, and then you center it. And what I realized is I was 37 years old, and I had not used my hands my whole life. And it was powerful. And really what I wanted was to give something to my kids, too. I wanted to show them that they could make mistakes. They could have flopped pots and accidents and that it was always going to be OK, that none of that perfect mattered. And actually, perfect was terrible. And so every day, I sit at the wheel, and I just make. There's my little guy. Got to hide it. So like Melissa, I too came to pottery later in life. A friend of mine had given me a bunch of succulent cuttings. And I needed to go find something to put them in. So I went to the store and was terribly uninspired by what I saw. Um, Mr. Johnson, the ceramics teacher at the time at Laguna, had offered for years for me to come up and try my hand at throwing. So I finally had the motive and the need. So I went up there. And I created this monstrosity. <laughs> uh, it's not centered. There's no foot. but. There is a hole, and so that's all that mattered at this point. And so begun my journey in clay. Uh, I could not get enough of this medium. I would sneak up to the studio at all points of time in the day, lunchtime, before school, after school, in between classes, whenever I could fit something in. I scoured the internet. I think I've watched every video that has the, the word pottery in it. Um, I used to come up, honestly, at 2 in the morning just because I had an idea uh, on the weekend. So I really threw myself into this, and I started to grow in skill, and I started to think about where these ideas were coming from. Um, and I came to the conclusion that it's not a light bulb that just goes off. It's not that these ideas hit us out of the blue or, or you know, come from magic or whatnot. They came from my eternal thinking about it and doing it and throwing myself into, no pun intended, throwing myself into um, this endeavor. And so I started to look at the world in a very, very different way. I was approaching it through the lens of, of pottery. So there was a pie of leaves outside of my house and looking at it, I don't really feel like cleaning that up. but. I could pick that up, and suddenly the idea was I can stick that into the side of a pot, make an impression, um, and use that leaf in a different way. One of my pens blew up. And inside, it was one of those older ones. There was a, those little coils that you can pull out, and it has this sort of jagged thing that you can take and cut clay off, and it creates a cool pattern. Um, at the supermarket, I encountered a cheese slicer, because I needed to cut some cheese. and. Uh, that can be used to facet pots down the side. It can make it look like a diamond. So 
one of our messages that we all are trying to pass to you today is to find your passion. Whatever that might be, it could be in music, in sports, in the arts, it doesn't really matter. Find your passion and pursue it. And from that, you'll find inspiration, ideas, creativity, and innovation. So you can think of this in another way, which uh, the Greek goddess of victory would say, just do it. Thank you. Thank you. Are you gonna smash it? Ha, 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 ha.